no reason to bring Drake on here, man. Um, these cats, you know, they 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 uh they they've put it all out there. Six disturbing details of the murder revealed. Working with the white man. There's so much stuff here that I've been wanting to like pretty much uh capture and I mean, you know, we're here now, we might as well go over at least some of it, you know? So uh, let's look at it. Are you currently part of the uh, transport team that is responsible for um, an inmate by the name of Robert Allen who's also been listed as a state witness in the case of uh, State of Florida versus three co-defendants for the homicide of Jossie Allen Boy? Yes, I've been assigned with the transport of Mr. Robert Allen. Have you been with Mr. Allen since, I believe it was Monday, um, as part of his transport team um, to assist in getting him, getting him here for trial? Yes. Okay. Is there, is there an incident that happened uh, today on February 9th that you alerted the state attorney's office to regarding um, some comments, threats, or however intimidation that was made by one of the co-defendants directed specifically at Mr. Allen? Yes. Who was the co-defendant or co-defendants that was involved in this incident? The co-defendant that we can identify as Mr. Newsom. Okay. And what is it that, well, tell us what it is that you uh, notified the state with. What happened? Uh, as directed by Your Honor, uh, Newsom, I mean, Mr. Robert Allen was supposed to come up here first, but as the procedures and normal operations of the jails, they usually pull the court docket kind of early, so unfortunately the defendants were in the holding area before we could come up here. And if I just may, when you say defendants, who were the defendants that were in the holding area? The only one I know of now is Mr. Newsom. Okay, so he was in the holding area, and then what happened next? Uh, we notified the Braves that were coming up with a high profile, so they can secure it, lock everybody down, uh, they put these drapes on the windows, try to clear the hallway, as well. Bro, the, 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 the dude that's telling is telling, telling. He's telling, he's telling what happened during the trial, but during the trial, he's telling what's going on during the damn in the back end. Like, y'all better leave that boy alone, man. So apparently, the guy that is uh spilling the beans here, the suspect, the big guy, is basically um they had him in a holding cell. And during that time in the holding cell, they uh the other defendants, his code well, I don't know can you call them co-defendants now, now that he's going against them. Well, apparently they were out there shouting, you know, you working for the white man, boy. You know, um, you know, you 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 working for the white boys. Now, when you were being escorted into the courtroom, outside the presence of the jurors, being brought in and placed on the stand after you started testifying, were there any comments made to you that were not coming from myself or any attorneys? Yes. Who made a comment to you about your testimony? Point them out and identify them in the courtroom as to who you're referring to that made some comments to you. <laughs> hey. Hey, boy. Hold on, man. That picture right there. You got that pistol on, man. That picture tells a thousand words right there, boy. That's one of them pictures that they're going to draw in the courtroom. You're going to see that picture in the courtroom. You know how they be drawing little drawings and stuff? Boy. Y'all better leave that boy alone, man. So he's the one taking the plea deal. And I'm kind of curious on... Uh, I'm kind of curious what his, his deal is. Like, what he might get. Because them boys, them other boys, they, they doing life. And Florida got the death penalty. So, you know, them boys might get... They, who knows? They might get fried. But apparently... We'll learn more about this guy. We're going we gonna to keep going. Okay, there's two people wearing a blue suit. What race is he? Black. And is he seated on the end, middle? Okay. And who do you, who is This is a whole other charge. This is a whole other charge, too. Your Honor, please let the court identify uh, in court identification of Trayvon Newsom in this case for this matter. Masonic. Okay. <laughs> so Trayvon Newsom made a comment to you. After you started testifying, what was the comment that Trayvon Newsom made to you after you started testifying in this case? He called me the police and asked me to, and uh, said I worked for a white man in uh, an open cell. What did you take that to mean when he's saying that to you? Don't snitch. And when you say that you're, you say that you took it as your snitch, how would you understand that to mean in terms of any impact that it would have on you as you're testifying still in this case? Did you take it that way? A little bit. Woo! No further questions. He took it as a, he said I took that as a threat a little bit. No. So they gonna they, they gonna probably get that boy a little bit more something something now. 
the hell? And at the conclusion of this evidence, you'll find that Dietrich Williams, Michael Bobright, and Trayvon Newsom are guilty of first degree murder and guilty of armed robbery in this case. The trial of three men for the murder of rapper XXX and Tashione is underway. We take a look at the top moments from the trial so far. I'm Antoinette Levy, and welcome to Law & Crime's Sidebar Podcast. Salute, Trayvon son. Newsom, Dedrick Williams, and Michael Boatwright are all on trial for the murder. A fourth man, Robert Allen, pleaded guilty and is testifying for the prosecution in this case. XXX and Tashion, whose legal name is Jose Onfrey, had $50,000 in cash on him as okay. he shopped for motorcycles in South Florida on June 18th, 2018. So, so apparently... So, so apparently from this standpoint, and he gave it out the full, a full confession, which you probably can look into later, but he's pleading guilty. And what, from what I'm thinking, and at least I'm seeing here is that he's pleading guilty and that more than likely he will be getting a, uh, guilty, uh, verdict of second degree murder. They're getting, they're trying to get these dudes for first degree murder. First degree murder, you more than likely, like I said, you might get fried, electric chair, no parole, all that. Second degree murder, you might can get parole. You get, like uh, someone even stated in the chat, you get that 25 years, you might can get out and, you know, still have a life a little bit afterwards. A group of men ran to his vehicle, shot him, and stole his money. Now, nearly five years later, this trial has begun. Prosecutor Pascal Achille gave a strong opening statement telling the jury they will see surveillance video that clearly shows Michael Boatwright shooting and killing XXX and Tashione. Jose is there, unarmed, in the driver's seat, surprised by the two gunmen in this case. They working for him. How they start struggling with him, punching him, and that both of the gunmen at one point are trying to get his property from him. They're able to. Well, well, fry. Look, they ain't got the ledger chair, but they gonna put that, put that, uh, that sodium chloride or whatever the hell they put in them. Wrestle away from him, the satchel that had the fifty thousand. What you mean, Casey? What you talking about? Talk to me. Dollars in cash, and without any provocation, without any type of weapons or anything being used by the victim, you'll hear how Michael Boltwright fires several times, killing the victim at close range. You'll also be able to see the surveillance that shows this. With three men on trial, they have three separate defense attorneys, so each attorney gave his own opening statement. Michael Boatwright's attorney went first, and he claimed that Robert Allen, he's the man who pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and is testifying for the state, will lie to the jury when he gets up on the stand. Robert Allen is the only person that you will hear from that puts Michael Boatwright at Riva Motorsports on June 18, 2018. And he has a whole host of reasons to lie. And in law school, they teach us don't <coughs> promise something in opening statement that you can't deliver on during the trial. Well, let me be very clear. If Robert Allen testifies in this case, he will lie, and we will prove that he is lying. So, so he's trying. So Boatwright, he, Boatwright must have been in the whip or something. Never was seen in the surveillance camera. So they trying to, they trying to, he trying to get him completely removed from this, uh, from this whatsoever. He might have the best chance. Uh, okay, so Casey, you're saying that the lady, the lady I was just talking, she's on the case with Thugger as a what defense or prosecutor? Which one? Police ignored an extraordinary amount of evidence that Michael. Are the one? Which which one? Dedrick Williams' attorney, Mauricio Padilla, was... He got, he lost some weight. ...up next, and he claims that law enforcement dropped the ball and did not investigate this case properly. He touches on the fact that Broward County police had their backs up against the wall because of the Parkland school shooting that happened just four months prior to the homicide. He then says how the same detective from the Parkland school shooting was handed XXX's case. He points out that that detective and other investigators cut corners because they wanted to wrap this case up as quickly as possible. Finally, Padilla goes on to say how law enforcement didn't look into the Grammy Award-winning rapper Drake. Before X died, he said, if anybody kills me, it's Drake. And do you think that for one moment, here today, days after the event, he's killed by two masked men, right? He came on social media and said, guys, before he does, if anybody kills me straight, do you think in that time, time span that they went and they addressed him, they talked to him? No. Do you think sitting here today, years later, any detective has ever asked, you know, Drake or anybody like that? No. They never did that. So you ask yourself, how could that be? If any of us is involved in, you know, God forbid, in a murder, and you say, hey, it's so-and-so, you better believe so and so is going to get investigated. But in this case, they didn't do it. They didn't do it because they didn't, they didn't comport with their version and their narrative. And as law enforcement, I think that they have the obligation to do <laughs> Finally, Trayvon Did, News. Yo, he capping. Tom's attorney gave he his doing too statement. Much. He went last. And instead of pointing to evidence that will clear his client, he pointed to evidence and said what it will not show. My opening statement and all opening statements are supposed to be about what the evidence will show. But in this case, I'm going to tell you what the evidence will not show. The evidence will not show that any firearm was ever recovered that could be matched or linked to Trayvon Newsom. The evidence will not show that anything from a thorough search of his home where he lived with his father and his sister, including digging up his entire backyard, 
because they heard the money was buried there, turned up anything that would link Trayvon Newsom to this terrible crime. The evidence will not show that Trayvon has ever made a statement of admission or any statement that would link him to this terrible crime to any third party or anyone else for that matter. The evidence will show no DNA whatsoever found on the body of Mr. Envoy or on that car. Although you see a tussle going on, you see they allege he goes around the car and gets actually into it, no DNA whatsoever linked to Trayvon Newsom. No fingerprints linked to Trayvon Newsom. No cell phone evidence places Trayvon Newsom anywhere near that scene of the crime that day. At the time of the murder, XXX was shopping for those motorcycles with his uncle. His so we see Robert Allen and Big uh, Big Boy, and then this is the Trayvon, I guess Trayvon Newsom in there in the video. This is the one that's doing the plea deal now, right now. He's the one that's just snitching, snitching. And the reason why Buddy right here is snitching is one, he does have, I guess, I guess the more like unlikely. Now, they said supposedly that they were going here to get masks. They were getting masks. I'm confused. Were they getting trying to get masks from this place? Like, this place sells masks? This part I'm a little confused, but the next thing I'm gonna say though also is that they they uh they they uh they punked this guy. They gave him five thousand dollars out of the fifty thousand that everybody else uh, everyone else split apparently or something like that. Step uncle, actually Leonard Kerr. Kerr took the stand and explained he was able to run away from the car when the shooters drew their guns on him and XXX. He's on surveillance video running away from the shooting. Kerr explained what he saw and heard minutes later. Are y'all doing that? If that's, if you, if your nephew in the car, you gonna you gonna run out run off on him like that? Let me know, chat. Now, at the point that you're calling Cleo, had anything else happened other than you exited the car for your life? I don't know where down there. The two men that jumped out the car was down there. So you left Jose in the car, and the two gunmen were still there? Yes, ma'am. Did you see anything that happened to Jose, between Jose and the gunmen after that? Okay. Before, when I arrived here, I the tall guy, tall guy, went around to Jose's side. He shot the one that came around the door that I was, my door that I was, and he go inside the car. You saw that? I see that because I was looking, but I don't want to hear. I saw some. Who in the, who in the, some of the man that was on the phone. <clears throat> I see looking down there. When I keep looking, I realize that the shot that one come around to my side. The taller one go to Jesse's side. Okay, so and it's almost like, I'm sorry. And then I heard something like, hey, hey. How much time I don't know, but I heard something like that. Like, an, an explosion? Yeah. Let's go back to Robert Allen. He's the man I just told you about who pleaded guilty to second degree murder and is testifying for the state. On Wednesday, Allen took the stand and claimed that he and the three defendants robbed and killed XXX. Now the uncle said that the guys came around the car, but the they, parking they lot never went around that car. Like they ne he Maybe that's what he thought when he reached over like that. Them boys is holding them AR pistols, bro. Explained what happened over those three short minutes. Trayvon Newsom do actually grab the bag. Actually grab the bag, shot to the front. Go ahead, I'm gonna ask him to speak to the right as he grabbed the bag, shots are fired. Who shoots the shots that are fired? Michael Bullard. And who does he shoot? Triple X. Where does he shoot him from? What side of the car? Driver. So if Triple X is in the driver's seat and Michael Boatwright is in the driver's side, the shots are coming onto Triple X's left side or right side? Which side? Left side. Okay. And what happens after how many times? In this scene that surveillance footage, bro, it's really bad, sad because they pretty much already had the bag and shot him. Like they, or they shot him backing up. It was stupid. Shoots triple X. What does triple X do as a result of that? What does Michael Boltwright do next? What does Trayvon Newsom do? What does Dietrich Williams do? Now, are all four back in Dodge Journey? Yes. What does Teacher Williams do? He drives home. So Allen claims that Newsom grabbed the bag of money, Boatwright shot XXX, and Williams was the getaway driver as Allen was sitting in the car. The prosecution went on to show surveillance footage of the murder. So were the gunmen Newsom, Boatwright, and Williams, and will they be convicted for the murder Watch. of XXX oh. and Tashion? That is the question here, so stay tuned to Sidebar to find out as we continue to cover this case. Stupid, bro. Stupid, bro. Stupid.